friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. My name is Kathy and let's talk about some books. For those of you celebrating, um, it's almost the new year, so I'm wearing red. Anyway, on to the video. As you can tell from the title, I'm doing a just a little review of my reading in 2022. It's the first time I'm making a video like this, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know how interesting it'll be, but I think it's kind of fun to collect and analyze some data. So let's have a go at it. And I will say, even though, so even though I didn't make a video like this last year um, for 2021, I do have data for it. So I think it'll be also nice. I'm going to do some comparing. Yeah, that's it. I think it's not going to be a super long one. Let's get started. So overall, I read 45 books last year. Um, my goal was 49, so I didn't reach my um, reading goal. That's fine. I was trying to make up for it. Like I fell behind a little bit and then I was trying to, to get back on track, but not super intensely in a way that would like make me feel stressed but yeah i still wasn't able to get to the 49 that's all right i will say that i go by books i finished in 2022 and so there were two books that i was in the middle of reading at the end of the year but i didn't end up finishing until like first week of january so i didn't count those because i just like to go by when the date that i finished a book um, I still have the same for, uh, same goal for this year, 49 books. I like the number 49, so we'll stick with that. And let's see, compared to la or compared to 2021, in 2021 I finished 54 books. So I did read a little bit more the previous year. And looking at total number of pages, I read a total of 13,777 book, or not books, that would be amazing, 13,777 pages. And some other interesting stats provided by Goodreads. The shortest book I read in 2022 was We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, um, which is fair, it's like 52 pages I think. And the longest book I read was The Woman in White, which was 702 pages. And oh, another interesting thing, the most, so of the books that I read, the most shelved on Goodreads was The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. And then the least shelved book I read was Fosty by Ovid, which again, not super surprising. All right, so now that's pretty much like the highlights from, from Goodreads, everything that I was interested in. And then now moving on to some of my own stats that I've collected over the years, um, like last year and in 2021, and I'll do some comparison. The first thing we'll start with is the sex of the author, so male versus female, or female versus male. So this year I did fall behind a little bit. I had 44% of my books were written by female authors and 56% of the books I read were written by male authors. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I would like it to be a little bit more evenly split. Um, you can see compared with 2021, I had an exact 50-50 split, which was very impressive, I think. And then the next thing I like to track is the amount of works and translation I read um, as compared with books that are written in English. So last year, 30% of my books were works and translations and 70% were written in English. Um, I do think I can get, I would like it to be a little bit higher in terms of the amount of works and translations, I think a good split for me would probably be like 40-60, like 40% works and translations and 60% English. I just think it's a good split because a 50-50 is a little bit hard just because if I am reading in English, there's just a wider selection of books that were written in English. 
I do want to increase the amount of works in translation, but I think anything above a 40-60 split is a little bit um, too challenging and perhaps unreasonable. I don't know. But let's take a look. So I, this, this I'm really proud of for 2022 because back in 2021 my stats were 7% works in translation and 93% English. So I did a lot better in terms of reading books that have been translated. Um, so really proud of myself for that. I don't know if I'll hit the 40-60 split this year, but just want to increase it little by little. All right, so going into a little bit more of the translated works, um, looking at the like original language that the books were written in, and um, I don't think I did this for 2021, so I won't have a comparison, but this is just looking a little bit more at last year, the, I guess, like distribution of languages. And so obviously the 31 books in English and then 13 books that were translated. So I have three French, three German, two Italian. It's obviously a very European centric. <laughs> And then one Chinese, one Russian, one Spanish, one Norwegian, and one Latin. <laughs> so yeah, that's interesting. I'm thinking hopefully I can get some, some other languages in there for this year. Yeah, that's just, a, I don't really have much to say about that or like specific goals about what specific languages I want to read from. Um, but it's just interesting to take a look at. So that's what it's there for. Moving on into the genre of books. Now I don't go into like specific genres in terms of like mystery thriller or like historical fiction or like that because I tend to read a lot of classics and with those it's like sure they have a genre but then they're kind of a, their, their own genre and so it just gets hard and a lot of books can fit into multiple genres and so it's that it just makes it really hard. So I just do the most, I guess, mutually exclusive genres, whereby if they're one, they're highly unlikely to be in another genre. Therefore, we can get like a clear distinction. So I just separate it into poetry, nonfiction, and fiction. And this year was not super ideal, I think. Um, the stats are not what I would like to see. Um, I went quite heavy on the fiction for, um, I keep saying this year, it's last year. I went a little bit fiction heavy last year, so I only ended up having 4% of my books being poetry, and I think that's just one book, I want to say. Um, oh no, two, because I counted Fosty as a work of poetry, because technically it is. So yes, there is two works of poetry making 4% and then 13% of my books were nonfiction, uh, leaving 82% of the books that I read were fiction. And taking a look at 2021, I actually had a little bit more um, both of poetry and nonfiction. So I had 7% poetry and 27% nonfiction in 2021, with 65% of the works being fiction. So I think going into this year, we'll definitely make more of an effort to read poetry and nonfiction, just because like I just I just gravitate towards fiction and novels so easily that I think if I start not thinking about it as much, what I tend to pick up and what I tend to choose to read ends up being novels. So just keeping that a little bit more in mind. And I do think I might, um, because I don't think I ended up reading like short story collections last year. Um, the closest thing I could think of would probably be like Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino, but it's not really like discrete short stories. I wouldn't call it a short story collection. And so 
maybe this year I could introduce a new genre and we could see some representation from, from short story collections. <sighs> I'll read at least one. <laughs> and then lastly, the other sort of main thing I've been tracking and collecting data for is date of first publication. And so last year I had 9% of my books were pre 1700s, which I think is pretty good. I think that is pretty impressive. Um, that's a total of four books, four books that were pre 1700s. And surprisingly, I actually didn't read anything from the 1700s, uh, so the 18th century. Um, that was 0%. And then the 19th century or 1800s is 27%. And the biggest proportion of the books that I read, which I thought was kind of surprising, I did think that I would have more books in the 1800s, or at least like kind of e evenly split between 1800s and 1900s, but I ended up reading more books that were first published in the 1900s, so that comes up to 42%. And then 22% of the books I read were published in the 2000s or the 21st century. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't really have any specific directions of where I want to go. This is just more for interest sake, I think. And of course, with these, it's kind of just a general way of splitting it up. It might not be like super relevant, like, you know, a book that is that was published in 1899 is would be like the same as if it was published in like 1901 but then it gets divided into two separate categories so this isn't like the most i guess illustrative but it's still just interesting to take a look at um and then comparing to 2021 i think this is interesting because here you can really see that i did read a lot more classics last year than the year before. So in 2021, I had 2% of my books were written in the 1700s, 17% of my books were written in the 1800s, 30% um, of the books I read were written or were first published in the 1900s, and then 52%, so actually like majority of the books I read in 2021, were first published in the 21st century or to in the 2000s. Um, so I think that's probably the only like really interesting thing is just you can see the shift of me reading more classics last year. Um, so yeah, I think that's really interesting. All right, so those were the main stats that I was tracking last year um, and the year before that. Yeah, nothing too like extensive i don't like go into super details but just some broad categorizations i do think maybe this year one thing that i was thinking about last year of, of doing um but i didn't fully commit to it was something along the lines of like how many books i read per month or like even how many pages because like, I kind of want to see like in terms of how much reading, like quantitatively, how much reading I get done each month. Like what's the what's the spread and distribution of my reading productivity over the year? I think that would be an interesting um, statistic to, to look at and to add. Um, I don't think it'll take too long, I think. I think that's why I didn't do it last year was I was just like, oh, I don't know like how I'm going to set that up. But I think once I've like figured out the the process, it shouldn't take too long. Um, so I do want to add that for this year, maybe. Other than that, I'll just be keeping track of the same things. Um, I have been thinking of starting some sort of tracking, like country or nationality of author, um, but only in the process of doing like some sort of reading across the world challenge. I don't know if I'm going to do that and plan that. It, I think it, it'll take a lot of planning and researching. So maybe 
that's something I could get into this year, but we'll see. Um, so going into goals for this year, um, obviously going to aim for a more even split um, in terms of female and male authors. 50-50 um, is always the goal. If we go um, more on the female side, that's fine too. Then in terms of works and translations, I do want to up the percentage a little bit from 30%, but I think from now on, like stability-wise, anywhere between 30 to 40 percent, I'd be happy with for each year. So I think that's just something to like maintain and perhaps increase a little bit. So that won't be like the major focus for this year. I think my main focus this year is definitely going to be reading outside of fiction. So whether that's poetry, nonfiction, short story collection. Yeah, so just going a little bit, oh, even like plays, I should, if I do end up reading more. So obviously last year I read um, The Merchant of Venice by Shakespeare. I didn't read any other plays, but if I do end up reading more, maybe I could put that in its own category and just see. Or maybe I will like do the major division of poetry, nonfiction, fiction, but within fiction I could go with novel, play, and short story collection. That makes a little bit more sense. I think I might do that. Um, and then nonfiction could be split up into... Mm, nah, I don't think I read <laughs> enough nonfiction to, to divide that. I think, it, I think it'll just be like one of each category if I do end up doing that. So we'll leave it at the subcategorization of fiction. Um, but yeah, so definitely want to read more a more, a, a greater variety of genres and literary forms in this year. And yeah, that's pretty much my goals for this year. Um, just kind of keeping up with the same thing as I've been doing. I've been, I just, I've been on a roll with the classics. I'm like, I enjoy reading them. They, I haven't have an experience like a reading slump in a while with them and so I think I'm in a good place, good start to the year and yeah we'll see. I do think that I am like better equipped now to deal with reading slumps um, than I was before so even if it does happen then I think I've got kind of a few strategies to, to deal with that and yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know how many books you read in 2022 and how many books you plan to read this year. And then maybe let me know, other than the number of books, what's one like reading goal for this year or like a goal that you have or a direction that you have in terms of your reading. And again, happy Lunar New Year if you're celebrating. If you're not, just have a good weekend. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.